YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back today, ranking every NFL edge rush duo. So the two edge rushers on every single NFL team had to do some predicting here. Who will the starting edge rushers be? There's some teams that it's definitely up for debate. They got a pretty good rotation. Uh, there's definitely a team right now that's in, that's in some big trouble there. Uh, so we're going to break it down 32 to 1. We got all kinds of these same types of videos out there, player rankings by position. More on the way. More predictions on the way. We got you covered. Smash that like button, subscribe, follow us on Twitter. Link in description comments for anything you need. Here's our Twitter. Make sure you follow it. Very important there. Again, link down below. Uh, at the moment, the Kansas City Chiefs are in some deep shit, let me tell you. Uh, I, you know, Frank Clark could play. I'm not going to sit here and say 100% not going to play. But at the moment, it feels like this guy's not going to start week one. He might not play the whole year. He could serve up to three years in prison. Um, I don't think that happens, but I, I have no idea, really. Uh, I'm the football guy, you know. So you look at who they got for their edge rushers, Taco Charlton and Joshua Kando, who they just drafted out of Florida State. He's a very raw prospect. He's a pretty freaky athlete, uh, but it wasn't really a huge fan of his tape. But, he, again, he has upside, and I do like the fit with the Chiefs. Um, they got other guys that can fight for that spot. I thought those were the two best options Pretty rough. If they have Frank Clark, they're obviously a lot better. What I think they can do, because remember they have Derek Nottie, who's a nose tackle. They have Chris Jones, who's one of the best defensive tackles in football. And Jaron Reed, who I like a lot. I think he's very underrated. What they could do, and what I heard they may do, is play all three of those guys at the same time. Chris Jones has the pass rush ability to kind of play an end spot. But the guy's not an edge rusher. Even if he aligns on the defensive end spot, I still can't call that guy an edge rusher. I mean, he's over 300 pounds. Uh, he's just very talented. They're still going to add an edge rusher. You know, watch out for Melvin Ingram. They were interested in him earlier in the offseason. Talks fell apart. They're probably going to make him another offer or maybe somebody else out there. Just at the time of recording this video, you know, I'm not going to put this on pause for the Chiefs. We could definitely could circle back, and I'll definitely talk on Twitter when I add somebody what I think of them now. But it's pretty rough right now, and this was my Super Bowl pick. Again, we'll update those closer to the season, my final predictions. But uh, Super Bowl caliber team, but edge rush being as important as it is, this is rough right now. So I, I don't think this will be their duo going into the season, like I said. Falcons uh, next, Dante Fowler Jr., who played very well with the Rams, uh, but then took kind of a step down with the Falcons last year. I think could play a little better this year, but still a lot to prove. Uh, and Ogan Deju, they got the rookie from Notre Dame, could be the other option right now. A little bit of a scheme change with... Uh, with Dean Pease, you know, who uh, they're they're another team. Remember, they just cleared a good amount of space trading Julio Jones. I know they need to sign their draft class. They did that. Uh, they didn't have to pay any of who, that Julio Jones uh, salary this year. We thought maybe they would have. So there's still extra space out there. That might be another team to add another player because it would be ideal to add somebody with Fowler in terms of the edge rush position. Uh, the Texans are next. Uh, they have Shaq Lawson, who I. Well, they got Shaq Lawson, I think Charles Amenhu will start at the end position. They do have Whitney Merciless. Now, here's the thing. Lovey Smith's scheme is going to look more like a 4-3. They want, he wants the traditional defensive ends. Tends to look for kind of the power rushers there. Uh, we'll see if that's you know what they roll with, but it feels like these guys will be the 4-3 ends in Lovey Smith's scheme. Whitney Merciless doesn't really fit a 4-3 in my opinion. I think they'll use him kind of as a utility player uh maybe that maybe they run you know one side more of a traditional defensive end another side you kind of like a merciless style which he's been a three four outside linebacker edge rusher so it's tough to say you know men who when he's coming out of tech uh out of texas i liked him as a three four end and that's what he ended up being with the texans but he also it was a possibility he could play four three end uh and that's that would be the case here i actually like a man who better than lawson um I haven't really been a big fan when Lawson was lining up as the actual edge rusher, um, you know. So they went and traded for him, but uh, not not a lot of athleticism here from this group, which kind of fits today's game. So we'll see. We'll see how they use Merciless. Doesn't really fit. Remember, they tried to trade him. They couldn't really do that. They worked reworked his contract then. So uh, the Ravens are next. Yeah, they they lost uh, Yannick Ngakwe. They lost Matthew Judon. Pretty tough there. 
Uh, so it's expected to be Tyus Bowser and Odafe away, the rookie from Penn State. They also have Pernell McPhee, who's actually more important than you, than, you, know, you may think to them. But he's not going to play an insane amount of snaps. You know, he's kind of a rotation. They use him in different ways. Almost can put him on the D line at times. Uh, so I think this will be their group of guys. Believe it or not, Tyus Bowser is very solid dropping in coverage. And you may say, pass rusher, what is that that important? For the Ravens scheme, it actually is. They'll blitz the inside linebackers, drop the edge rushers in coverage. Bowser is pretty damn impressive actually dropping in coverage. He needs to develop more as an actual pass rusher. You know, in a way, a raw prospect. Definitely, I liked him as a prospect a lot, but you can't expect a whole lot of him right away. And they really liked his athleticism. So this isn't a group that is going to generate a ton of production. If there was a team that doesn't really need that, it would probably be the Ravens. But, you know, getting that pass rush production is always important no matter who you are. Uh, the Giants probably going with two of the Georgia guys here and Lorenzo Carter Jr., and Aziz Ajulari loved Ajulari's tape, loved his season last year. A uh, little bit of a knee issue, but the knee injury was years ago. So that was why he dropped, but I thought it was a little weird. So I'm really not too worried about him. He's a fantastic speed rusher off the outside. Um, you know, some worried about his length. I I'm not worried about that. So, and he can drop in coverage as well. Um, so these guys kind of complement each other. You know, just unproven right now. Definitely need to see more out of Carter and Ajulari. Uh, how will he be day one? Uh, the Colts are next. Quiddy Pay. I like the fit of Quiddy Pay with the Colts as a 4 3 defensive end next to DeForest Buckner. I've talked about it. Kind of gave me Armstead Buckner vibes from San Francisco. They have Buckner, obviously, and he's kind of entering his prime. You go Quiddy Pay. You know, you can't expect a whole bunch right away, but I think he could be a little better than expected right away because he was a little underwhelming last year in Michigan with sacks. I think he'll be much better than that. Kamoko Ture, still kind of waiting for him to step up. I know injuries played a part, but they need somebody to step up there. Um, they did draft Odangbo. I love the future here. Quiddy Pay uh, and Deo Odangbo, I actually love that, uh, but it might might take a little bit of time. That's okay. I know the Colts are trying to win now. Odangbo is probably not going to play at least right away because he tore his Achilles in January range there. Um, so... Yeah, it's a pretty good defense, but they they do need more pass rush here. It's gonna ride a lot on Teray stepping up big time, but I don't I don't have a lot of expectations for him at this point. I think it's more gonna rely on Pay getting to the quarterback because he was so close to getting the quarterback more often and actually sacking the quarterback last year in Michigan. Can they get that production out of him? Uh, the Jets carried a little bit by Carl Lawson. Lawson needs to pick it up as well. You see, he's a physical specimen. He's got a lot of. He's got the traits you look for. Um, he's still. It's almost like he's a prospect. So he's got a ton of upside, uh, and I think he'll step up this year. But you can't expect him to play to maybe his contract yet. They're banking on that. They're, they're paying him for the future, really. Still, and they have Vinny Curry uh, getting up there in age. You know, they could use a couple of rotation guys. I wish they would add somebody else there. Lawson kind of carrying the group. Seattle Seahawks, Carlos Dunlap looked pretty damn impressive when the Seahawks added him. Small sample size because he was a little underwhelming before that with the Bengals uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, and I think Kerry Hyder will be the guy opposite of him. Uh, we'll see younger guys like Daryl Taylor, uh, Alton Robinson, LJ Collier. Could those guys step up? Daryl Taylor is actually pretty interesting. He's a pretty a solid athletic pass rusher. Didn't really get to see him last year. So maybe a guy to watch out for. Uh, but Dunlap kind of banking on Dunlap playing the way he did in the second half of the season last year for Seattle. Um, it's kind of up in the air, but I uh, got confidence there. Next group of teams, Bengals next, Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard. Bengals were kind of back and forth with their scheme, a little bit of a multiple scheme. Sometimes Hubbard would be, would be more of a 3-4 end, sometimes more of a 4-3 end. Um, you know, so if they want to – and he's very good stopping a run, so it actually makes sense that Hubbard be a 3-4 end. Hendrickson's build almost says he's kind of similar in a way. Um, do they they drafted Joseph Asai, who's a very raw edge rusher. He's more of an off the ball linebacker still, so he's still developing. But maybe they want to roll with Hendrickson and Osai as the edge rushers. Use Hubbard inside. I think they're going to start with these guys as the edge rushers. They're going to rotate some guys in. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Akeem Davis Gaither is kind of a hybrid type player. I, I definitely view him more as an off the ball linebacker, but you almost can rush him off the edge as well. So uh, it seems like they're going for more versatile players, which I don't love, even though there's some pieces that I do like of their defense. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think that I just want them to go get the most talented players and just just pick a defense. You know, um, but uh, yeah, 
It's kind of power rushers here. Similar style of what the Texans got, and these guys are better. Uh, Josh Allen and Clavon chase on for the Jags. Uh, we'll see what they run. Some talk that they could run a 3-4. Some talk that they can run a 4-3. And some talk that they can run a multiple defense, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, but they do have some versatile players, at least. Um, Josh Allen, you know, looking at their – I talked about the linebacker video. The linebackers, it looks like they should be running a 4-3 because those three linebackers would be pretty good next to each other. Looking at their edge rushers – it looks like they just run a 3-4. Josh Allen dominated the 3-4 outside linebacker edge rush position at Kentucky. Clavon Chase on. A little, played a little bit of both at LSU, but with his athleticism, you like him in that scheme as well. Uh, Chase on needs to step up. A little underwhelming last year. Did, did miss quite a few games. Uh, but he was a raw prospect anyway, so he's an upside guy. Uh, Josh Allen, a little underwhelming, but I'm not I'm not worried about Josh Allen. He's, he's a... We saw what he could do in his rookie year. That's not going to disappear completely. Um, so, But young guys got to step up. The Bills, pretty tough to predict who will start for the Bills here at the edge rush position. The great news is they, they're they pretty deep. They're pretty deep at the edge rush position. The bad news is they you know don't have that wow guy maybe yet. Maybe, or maybe they do, but they're not there yet, meaning the younger guys that they got could be that. Um, but they're just – a big problem was actually getting to the quarterback. They got pressure – and that's where yeah, pressure is good and all, but at the end of the day, you got to get to the quarterback. You know, Jerry Hughes, I'm expecting him to be their best guy still, but a guy that kind of was a step or two away from getting to the quarterback a ton of times. He's got to make, he's got to finish those plays. And they drafted Gregory Russo in the first round, I think, for a reason. Uh, I think he's very talented, and it was a guy the last time we saw him play. You know, he just got to the quarterback. He was in terms of a. How he did it, yeah, maybe he needs a little bit of work. He was a raw prospect. He was a receiver in high school, you know, so that made sense. But they're like, forget this. Let's just go get the guy that gets to the quarterback. That's kind of what I felt that they did. They also got a versatile player that they can actually play inside when they have another edge rusher outside. But I think these will be their two best guys. Uh, Mario Addison, you know, wasn't a huge fan of that signing last year, kind of aging. Uh, and they do have Epinesa, and it could be, I think if it's not this group, it could be Hughes and Epinesa. They also have Basham Jr., who's pretty solid. Another guy that probably can play inside, I think by his build, people want to say that, but he is more of a defensive end. So the great news here is, that, is they have rotation and depth. Hopefully these young guys get going early because the Bills win that Super Bowl. They need to get to the quarterback and actually bring the quarterback, or hit the quarterback at least, more often here. The Lions, Lions can be sneaky good. It almost sounds like they're going to run a 3-4, though, and that kind of makes me wonder about Trey Flowers because uh, I view him as strictly a 4-3 end. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I like Romeo Okwara. They have the brother, Julian Okwara, who could also play the other side. Jamie Collins is pretty interesting, too, because he's a linebacker, but if they're going to run a 3-4, he does have experience rushing the edge as a 3-4 outside linebacker. So they, you know, another team that's kind of deep, they can go multiple routes here. I think these are overall their two most talented guys. We'll see if Flowers fits. Um, Okwara had a really good year last year. We'll see if that stays consistent. Um, I think it's a sneaky good group as well. Leonard Floyd's been having an underwhelming career, except for last year. It was pretty damn impressive. They got him back. If you guys are with us for the pre-draft process, not this past draft, the year before, you guys know I love Terrell Lewis. Terrell Lewis is an uh, absolute stud. The, this, the big question is health. If he stays healthy, which is a major if, he's very, very good. And um, I'm hoping he's good to go because I think Floyd and Terrell Lewis could be this, – this could be even better than this, you know. But kind of banking on Floyd continuing that progress and Lewis staying healthy, banking on some things here. Uh, the Saints, Cam Jordan obviously carrying the group, fantastic defensive end. Davenport's been extremely disappointing. But another one of those guys that really wasn't supposed to be that great right away. You know, so can this be the year? They also add Peyton Turner, which I think if he's healthy, he could be solid right away. I know that was a surprising pick. Uh, it was a surprising pick to most people because he wasn't a big name, but it was to me because the several injuries that he had. So that's really the only concern there. He's a little bit of a raw prospect as well. He reminds me of Davenport a lot because Turner had I mean, one of the best. I mean, you won't see a higher mo uh, off the get off off the ball and a higher motor guy. Those combined than Peyton Turner. So maybe he figures it out right away. If he's healthy, he could be better than Davenport. If they're both healthy, I mean, Davenport, the injury concern is, is there as well, uh, but they need somebody to step up there. Don't have Hendrickson anymore which he kind of stepped up for them, but they didn't really start him anyways. He didn't play an insane amount of snaps. I think they just played him on obvious passing downs. Um, 
But yeah, Jordan kind of carries this group. It's pretty similar to the Vikings here. Daniil Hunter, uh, who's a fantastic defensive end, uh, kind of carries this group. They are a little deeper than, you know, it's like the Saints. The Saints had Davenport, and uh, now they got Peyton Turner. The Vikings got DJ Wonham, who I thought had a pretty impressive um, rookie season. Definitely need more. It's definitely a spot you can get better. But they, they draft Patrick Jones. They they draft, um, I'm a fan of Janarius Robinson. I think he actually could be the guy uh, there. I liked him a lot out of Florida State. So uh, they brought Stephen Weatherly back. I think they use him. Yeah, I don't think they'll start him. I think it's kind of a rotation guy. Obvious passing downs, put him on the inside perhaps. They were doing that with him a couple years ago before he went to the Panthers. Uh, but, yeah, Wonham, I, I guess he showed some signs there. But it's really Hunter kind of carrying the group, who was, who was a very good defensive end. The Chargers, Joey Bosa and Uchenna Nwosu here. It could be uh, Fackrell, who they added. I view him as a rotation guy. Um, Nwosu's a pass deflection machine for an edge rusher, so I do like that about him. Kind of coming in out of USC, he was on the fence. Is he off the ball? Is he an edge rusher? So still finding his place, could be getting better. I think he is getting better. Bosa's fantastic. Uh, when we heard Staley was going to the Chargers, uh, we know he runs a 3-4, so it's kind of like, you know, is Joey Bosa more of a 3-4 end, not an edge rusher? But they keep saying that Bosa is an edge player, so he'll be an edge rusher. Bosa's thing is he's got to get to act to the quarterback. You know, he gets the pressure, he just torches, just dominates his tackle off the line more than anybody, better than anybody with his technique, his strength, his burst, get off, you know. Uh, but he kind of—it seems like he can't finish a lot of times. I do think having the injury is a little bit a uh, legitimate excuse. So he's—if if he can kind of finish and stay healthy, he can be the very best pass rusher in football. So um, we'll see what, what they roll with there in, in uh, LA. Next group of guys, I like the Dolphins duo here. Emmanuel Ogba, you know, we're, we are riding on. We're kind of banking on th some things here. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba playing like he did last year at a fantastic season. Before that, extremely underwhelming. I was a fan of him as a prospect, so it was pretty underwhelming leading up to last year, and that was kind of more the guy that I expected in the NFL. So we'll see if that continues. Uh, and Jalen Phillips, if you were with us during the pre-draft process, you guys know I love Jalen Phillips. Uh, I think he could be an instant impact. So, But we are banking on <clears throat> Ugba continuing to play the way he did and Phillips being an instant impact, but it could be pretty solid. I like that they're kind of going to more of that traditional 4-3 look a little bit, even though Phillips could play just about anything. You know, last year they kind of had Lawson moving in and out. Not a huge Lawson guy, even though he played all right. And then when he was in, Van Noy, who's kind of a off-the-ball slash edge guy coming off the edge. At first, I was a little worried when they got rid of Van Noy, but it was to go, to go in this direction, and I like this direction. Uh, the Patriots, Matthew Judon and Chase Winovich. Uh, I, yeah, I think they're kind of they're similar to the, the Dolphins, you know. Uh, and it probably has something to do with they ran the same defense. Um, you know, Flores coming from that Belichick hybrid scheme, uh, you know, but I think the Patriots are kind of going a little more strictly to actual pass rushers off the edge, even though they have Van Noy too, they're going to stay, they're going to stay creative, but they, I mean, Matthew Judon is an, is an edge rusher. Chase Winovich is an edge rusher. You know, usually it's kind of the both edge and off the ball, which it's worked for them, but I kind of like this route as well. Uh, maybe more of a traditional 3-4 look at times compared to normal. Um, so, yeah, Judon. I think Judon had a lot of drop, you know, coverage reps in, in – um, a lot of coverage reps with the Ravens. And the, I think he could be used more as an actual just pure rusher. The Patriots, a little more, and that could result in some more production. Cardinals, some people may go, where's J.J. Watt? People talking about Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt, a dominant pass rush duo. And technically they are, but we're ranking the edge rush duos here in the Cardinals 3-4 defense. Uh, J.J. Watt is a 3-4 end. Chandler Jones is is your edge rusher in the 3-4. On the opposite side, it is Marcus Golden. Uh, they do have Gardeck. They do have Kennard, um, who they used last year. Gardeck actually got going pretty good uh, before the injury. But these these are the guys here. Chandler Jones got to stay healthy, but he's very solid. And Golden, I think a little on the under, underrated side. You know, when he, No matter where he was, he got pretty good production. Even with the Giants, it was tough for a Giants edge rusher to get some decent production, you know, and, and he got that. So he's a guy that's going to get after it out there. So uh, solid duo there. Maybe a little, still a little carried by Chandler Jones. Cowboys to Marcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory. Gregory is starting to heat up. So we'll see. He was a damn good prospect for a reason out of Nebraska, you know. So we'll see if that continues there. Demarcus Lawrence. 
Very talented. Needs to put a whole season together. It feels like he's always, you know, underwhelming half a season, then all of a sudden tearing it up like we expect him to. Uh, but it's really on Gregory if he continues to play the way he was, uh, kind of getting back to form there. Uh, that's pretty scary. Next group of guys, we got the Raiders. Top 12 here. Surprising, but they got they got better adding Yannick Ngakwe, and I like that. He's in a firm, you know, he's he's in a spot. You know, he's in a place. He's got a home right now, at least for two years. And that's going to help. You know, he was jumping all over the place, kind of getting thrown in. Um, you know, a little bit of a different type of role with the Vikings and kind of just thrown in there. And he led the team in sacks, even when only playing five games. Uh, you know, and then he went to Baltimore and they had him dropping in coverage more than he's used to. You know, and he's just kind of all over the place. You know, he's kind of doesn't really get to settle in. So now he gets to settle in. Um, and he's just going to be a pure edge rusher here. Opposite of Max Crosby, they also have Cleveland Farrell, who I still have some confidence in. Uh, but these are their two best guys here, and um, I think it's pretty solid. You know, Max Crosby's proven himself. And I think some people aren't sold on Ngakwe, but I'm telling you, if he if he's settled in somewhere, I think he's going to be solid, and we saw it before. So uh, I like this, this group here. Eagles next, Brandon Graham. Uh, you know, he's not getting <clears throat> any better at this point of his career, but I mean, he's still damn good stopping a run. But he still gets after the quarterback at a pretty solid level. And they add Ryan Kerrigan recently to a kind of a steal of a deal. And you you could add one of my guys here. I like Josh Sweat a lot. You could add Sweat into this factor. You could add Derek Barnett into this factor here. Um, so it's Graham and one of those guys. I do I do like Sweat a lot. You know, he's flashy dude i had a first round grade out of him in florida state the only concern was uh injury concern obviously uh man he's getting better so it could be him but ryan kerrigan can't forget how good this guy is and i don't really think he's i don't think it's fair to say he's declined you know he just got less reps because uh the the washington football team changed their scheme a little bit and they're it's such a young defense they're rolling with chase young and montez sweat because that that is those are the do that's the duo right there you know so Kerrigan can be pretty nasty in this Eagles defense with this rotation. It's a really good defensive line rotation they got there in general. Titans, uh, kind of like the Raiders, kind of boosting up. I love adding Bud Dupree. I loved his game before he got hurt last year. Uh, the first quarter of the season, I was calling him maybe the front runner for defensive player of the year. Uh, TJ Watt kind of took that over in no time. But um, I thought he was so important that Sears defense. It's all about his alignment. You know, he'll rush from the outside, the inside, he'll drop back. Um, you know, he created quarterback hurries. He created some – felt like he was getting doubled up more. I thought he created for his teammates. And this is exactly what the Titans needed. They needed somebody to kind of go out there and create. Um, Landry was a lot better two years ago It's because they're actually rushing him more. They were dropping him back a little too often last year. So I think adding Dupree to the mix, I think, uh, helps this group big time. Uh, and then we go to the Steelers. It is carried by T.J. Watt a bit, who is one of the best in the business, so that definitely helps. Alex Highsmith looked pretty solid. He was getting some pressure, and he was a sleeper of mine out of Charlotte, uh, a draft to go. Uh, I, I do think there is a little maybe too much hype just based on the pro football focus grade. Uh, I, I know I, I, and he played solid, don't for, I guess, especially for a guy getting thrown in there and for a mid-round pick. Um, but I, I'm not you know, saying we everyone should have the highest expectations right here, but um, it's still a very solid duo. I'm just excited to see what Highsmith's got for us here. Uh, the next group, we got the the Panthers, who uh, Brian Burns I'm a huge fan of. I think he's a stud. He's only getting better. Um, got a good collection of uh, pass rush moves. He's got the athleticism. He gets to the quarterback. He's only getting better, like I said, too. So I think he'll have a monster season. So that helps having him. But they also have a guy uh, that had a monster season last year, Hassan Reddick. I do think it was a unique defense for the Cardinals, where it was almost, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of stunts that kind of gave him a free shot to the quarterback. So I don't know if you uh, can expect the same exact production. I don't really, I wouldn't expect it, but I still think he's a pretty solid guy. They also have Gross Matos in there. They got you know, they got Morgan Fox who can move around a bit, but these are the main duo. Just a huge Brian Burns guy, so I love this group. Uh, the Packers, some may put Zedaria Smith and Rashawn Gary here. I'm not, you know, Gary progressed a little bit, but he's a rotation guy. Preston Smith almost had double the snaps as Gary at the end of the day. I know Gary was starting to get more as the season went on because they realized, okay, he's developing. So I understood. I think Smith and Gary at the end of the day could actually split snaps this year. Uh, but the, this is the duo at the end of the day. Preston Smith, um, 
I, st- I still think he's solid, kind of kind of stopping the run, reading plays, misdirection in the backfield. And he gets out of the quarterback a little more two years ago than he did last year, obviously. Zedaria Smith, I'm a huge fan of. It's another one, you know, I talked about Bud Dupree, his play style. Zedaria Smith, similar, you know, he kind of gets in the team, the quarterback's head pre-snap where he's lining up and where he can rush from, and then he, he makes those big plays at the same time. Uh, the Bears are next. It's tough because Robert Quinn was, I, I mean, disappointing is an understatement probably. Uh, but I think he can get going a little more this year, but they do have Khalil Mack, who's one of the best in the business as well, so that helps. But kind of banking on Robert Quinn getting going a little more this year, but it, the, it was – what I did worry about a little bit when the Bears signed Robert Quinn is because he, he either kind of disappointed where he was or he succeeded where, you know, it would kind of back and forth over his career. And if you look at the pattern, you know, he succeeded on 4-3 defenses. So that's why I was a little worried because the Bears didn't run a 4-3. So it, it was a little, you know, he was a little underwhelming last year, but I think he could get things going. No excuses for this year. So we'll see if that happens. Kind of banking on that there. Niners next, tough one to rank because it's really all about health. I mean, it's it's an interesting defense because sometimes Ark Armstead is lined up as almost a as an edge rusher as a defensive end. Sometimes they slide him inside, so it's it's kind of, I guess by person, you know, it, it'll it'll vary there. But uh, I think for the most part, they want Nick Nick Bosa and D Ford to be their edge rushers. D Ford is a very good edge rusher. I think he's actually underrated in terms of the talent, the recognition of his talent. The big problem is health, and it even plays a part for Bosa. Health is not really a big problem, but it's it's a little bit of a concern. You know, if these guys stay healthy, I'm mainly looking at Ford because it almost feels like the Niners are expecting them, you know, or planning uh, for the worst there at the same time. You know, but if they're healthy, this is pr- it's pr- it could be number one. It's probably number one if it's healthy. So that's really the only question there for the 49ers. Um, but it is interesting because sometimes it's kind of Bosa Armstead. They did bring in Abukum, who can is kind of a hybrid of a edge off the ball. So it's going to vary by uh, play. Yeah, really the scenario, the situational stuff. That's what's going to vary on who the actual edge rushers are. So it is a little tough. I, I like the group. I like the group, though, for sure. And again, it has potential to be number one if healthy. Uh, top four for me. I got the Browns at four. Miles Garrett, one of the best in the game for sure. And he's getting better. He's got to stay healthy. Really no major injuries pop up, but he's got to finish full season. Jadeveon Clowney, I guess health is a concern there as well. Uh, but a talented dude, it's just, I uh, expected a lot more last year. I know he got hurt. A little underwhelming there. Um, but, you know, we know he's good stopping the run. He can get after the quarterback. It seems like he, when he's healthy, he shows up in big games. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's definitely a talented group out there. Buccaneers at three. Big part of why they won a Super Bowl here is Shaq Barrett, Jason Pierre-Paul. They actually had Joe Tryon, uh, which I like that pick. I like the fit. I love the fit with the Buccaneers. I would actually, I talked about this in the past, I'd watch out for them using Barrett, Pierre-Paul, and Tryon all at the same time. Not, you know, starting, not every play, but I I, I think they'll, they'll do it quite a bit, actually, um, because Tryon can drop in coverage, and JPP, uh, could actually play the defensive line. You almost can play in Golston spot if you need him to at times. Um, so that, that'll that be scary to see that. That'll throw some teams off because they'll probably line up and see Tryon out there. He's probably dropping in coverage, and then they actually can rush him to kind of fool him. So I'm actually excited about that. Uh, and then you got Von Miller and Bradley Chubb at two. One and two, so close. Von Miller got to stay healthy. What you know, It's been a while since we've seen him play. What has he got in the tank? I would expect that he's still extremely talented. Um, you know, I'm not going to expect the elite Von Miller though. Maybe not too far off Bradley Chubb. Uh, I thought he'd be a li- he's been very solid. I thought he'd be a little further along at this point. I know he had some injuries that kind of set him back, but, uh, I expect a monster year from him, from both is they just got to stay healthy or they got to stay healthy. Number one for me is Washington football team, Chase Young, who I realistically think could be the best pass rusher in football already, you know, this year and Montez sweat. Um, I mean, everyone loved Chase Young as a prospect, but I love Montez Sweat a lot, and it was a guy that uh, had a lot of upside down the road, and I think he's already hitting that, and that's fantastic. And playing with Chase Young, playing with the interior defensive line, playing under Ron Rivera only helps. So I think these guys are going to be absolute fr- – they already are, but they're going to be absolute freaks out there. I think this will be the best group in football. But there's some – you know, if you guarantee me entire season – the Broncos duo stays healthy the entire season. The Browns duo stays healthy the entire season. The 49ers duo stays healthy. Then we got a serious debate um, for number one. You know, serious, serious debate, you know, because there's not much at all splitting those guys up, um, you know. So 
Uh, really excited. I mean, this is one of the most important things in football here. You know, we'll talk about interior defensive linemen. We'll talk about the front sevens as a whole, you know, those things as well. Uh, but, yeah, get, getting pressure, pass rush in general is one of the most important things in football. And the Buccaneers showed it last year. That was that was an absolute game changer for them uh, to win it all. So uh, let me know your rankings on the duos. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be much appreciated. If you can also smash the like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, uh, follow us on Twitter. Link in the description comments for anything you need. But uh, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.